There have been small fringes that have taken extreme stances against this bill. I will take that as a compliment. Thank you very much, sir. It's factually inaccurate, but I mean, who needs facts when you've got a whole media apparatus that's willing to lie for you? Such to the point that you really can't find this interview anywhere on the internet because it's so bad. You're watching the VSO Gun Channel. It's excellent to have you here as always. Thank you for watching. And today we're going to be breaking down the Undetectable Firearms Act and why it's complete and utter bullcrap. This outdated provision was passed almost 40 years ago. Uh, it did have fudtacular uh, support from the trader Ronald Reagan. The UFA is a temporary provision of law that does not exist in reality. It has never existed in reality, and it will never exist in reality. It was all born off of mass hysteria over the innovation in polymer-framed handguns. Well, if you walk into any gun shop today, look at the pistol rack, and just a shot in the dark, I guarantee you that 50% or more of those firearms will be polymer-framed handguns. They are ubiquitous. And this thing has never come to pass, and it will never come to pass. And that's what we're going to break down in today's video, because this is a provision of law that was conceived in the 1980s and is about as applicable as a landline corded phone connected to a telephone wire as it is to your cell phone today. Given the recent trend, it is not hard at all to see how a rogue government could take a provision like this, particularly if they had an opportunity to update it and use it to press upon the rights of citizens. We say this all the time, it's all about control. I'm going to break down why this is idiotic and outdated after we hear a word from our sponsor. I started using XS back in my early 20s, you know, like when I could actually see. I used them for the first time in a force-on-force -force class, and up to that point, to be completely honest, I really didn't get it. From that experience, I can definitively tell you that XS's Big Dot site is the best site for when you're shooting like this. <laughs> Of course, they make regular site profiles too, but the consistent attributes are a bright tritium vial surrounded by a photoluminescent insert that charges up with exposure to any light source. They also do everything from shotgun beads to AK post sites, ensuring that XS has a solution when you need the brightest sites in any light. Most of you that are watching this video right now, particularly if you're watching it when it first launches, are into guns. And therefore, you understand this information implicitly. This first section of the video isn't necessarily for you directly. It's for you to use as a tool to educate people who are a little less firearm savvy than yourself. But then the new information is actually really important for you to have. Let's go to Chuck. And if it expires, it's allowed to expire, it could cause a surge of these undetectable guns, which justifiably has everyone, from our police officers and law enforcement, uh, to the sports and concert venues, to the TSA, all very, very nervous. Everything that he just said is complete and utter bullshit. Even the imagery of this whole thing with him standing up there with the banner that's the wrong size and the officers. But I want to draw your attention down to the corner here. There are four handguns sitting up there, and they've got them propped up there like they're in some way, shape, or form in violation of this provision, that there's some kind of illegal, mythical gut gun that can just path through everything. Uh, all four of those handguns up there will not pass through even a 1980s technology. Again, imagine a 1980s phone compared to what you got in your pocket here. All four of those are detectable even by the crappiest detectors of the 1980s. And I'm going to explain to you why really quick. This is a Glock. This is the gun that spawned this whole discussion. It is largely gone unaltered. There's been some uh, functional upgrades as far as like different internal changes, but the general design, this is a Glock 21 which was introduced in 1990, a couple of years after the first Undetectable Firearms Act. That is the slide of the firearm, and it is basically a required part. And it doesn't have to be ferromagnetic to set off a metal detector, quote-unquote. You can find metal detectors. People use metal detectors all the time to find jewelry and things like that that aren't going to be ferromagnetic. So the, the idea that it has to be, uh, but steel itself really sets off metal detectors. <laughs> this is required because the locking lugs for the bolt 
are part of the slide and most polymer frame handguns. This section right here on the barrel is the chamber and the breech. And you can see that it basically comes up and that's how it locks. Without that sturdy locking surface, it will explode in your face. This is a Glock barrel. Pretty close to just about every other semi-automatic polymer frame handgun that's out there. The locking lugs complement is also on the barrel. The barrel itself is a pressure vessel. Without this part in this design, it will blow up in your face. You'll notice that magnet isn't on the big metal chunks. Uh, that's because there's steel parts inside the plastic. This is the magazine, mostly polymer. What the current law requires is that every gun must contain at least around four ounces of metal. Now that's a small amount. It's no much more than this little row of pennies. Anyone know what a penny, do you young people know what a penny is? They used to be very valuable in the old days. Um, anyway, it's a joke. Um, although I did, well, forget it. Uh, in any case, uh, this, is, it's, this is how much metal about a row of pennies that has to be in every gun. It's a small amount. Look, I don't even have to make fun of this guy. He literally did it to himself. When was the last time you saw a row of pennies? If you need anything to pin the dating on the mindset of this kind of thing, there it is right there. But all of that is actually irrelevant. Let's get to something that's a little bit newer. Uh, recently, in a video, GOA took a 22 long rifle, which is, for those of you who are not firearm savvy, is essentially the smallest ubiquitous type of ammunition that's available on the market. There are smaller ones, but they're kind of very niche. And they took it and they put it inside of a 3D printed barrel, which would also likely explode in your face, but that's beside the point. And then put that behind a shirt and then took the cheapest available detector and passed it over it. And sure enough, it was able to detect even that small amount of metal. Metal is completely irrelevant to the detection of a firearm. When you go through a TSA at the airport, are you going through a metal detector? No, you are not. You are going through uh, a couple different pieces of technology. They have the ultrasonic detector, and your bags go through an MRI machine that's kind of mixed with a, an X-ray machine. So metal pops off but they can 3D manipulate what's inside your bag by doing nuclear magnetic resonance on your stuff. The pedo scanner, not a metal detector. They can make this now with 3D printers very easily. They can make 3D guns. As opposed to 2D guns. The man said it himself, what they're actually looking to do is target 3D printers. They want to control and regulate everything that you can produce by yourself targeting 3d printers because they do do not have control over the internet at large and people's ability to transmit information this is a first and second amendment issue and what they're trying to do is use this provision to install criminal penalties on individuals with 3d printers they become ubiquitous I'm thinking about getting one myself, even though I have, don't have time to play with one of those things. Since its installation in the late 1980s, how many people have been prosecuted using the Undetectable Firearms Act? If you guessed zero, then you'd be right, because they currently do not exist. Because manufacturers recognize that you have to have a certain amount of steel in your gun to be able to create a safe product that isn't negligent to sell to somebody. So if it's never been used against anybody in all this time, then why suddenly is it important that it be a permanent installation, even though the technology makes it completely irrelevant. I would say it's because they're looking to start doing something that without that particular provision, they might have a harder time doing. No. It's not true. That's impossible! Search your feelings, you know it to be true. 